Welcome back. In the last video, we discussed an alarm relay and how it can be used to close doors, close fire doors. It can be do it can be used to do a number of things. Um, and I just want to do a real quick example of the trouble relay. It does basically the same thing. Um, in one application that you'll find, particularly in the city of Chicago, in nursing homes and daycares and things like that, is a trouble bell. Um, so we have our we have our trouble relay here which right now is normally closed because nothing's in trouble. Well, let's say I cut a wire. I'm gonna, oops, that didn't work. Undo. Let's say this wire gets cut. Well, what's gonna happen? That zone's gonna go into trouble. This trouble light lights up and this relay is going to change states. So, no longer here. Now the relay change states. Now let's say we had this trouble bell. Oops. And we went. We took our power from this is the, right here. I drew a power supply. You could use power off the panel, but let's say they had an external power supply for their trouble bell. Go right from the negative, just like we did with our alarm, right to the bell. We take our positive. We're going to go through the trouble relay. We would have gone to common and normally closed because before, no, nope, I'm sorry, we would have gone to normally open because we don't want this bell ringing all the time, right? We only want it to ring when the panel goes into trouble. So the circuit would usually not be complete. And then as soon as this trips, it would go here. Now in an actual um, application, there'd be a little bit more going on here and I'll probably make a video on that in the future. You'd have actual, there'd be a silence switch somewhere because you don't want it to always ring. You want someone to be able to silence it and acknowledge it and you know, that kind of thing. And you need power there at all times. So you'd actually have a leg of power coming off of this normally closed um, so that, you know, going to the switch so that you could test the bell um, or so that it would ring if you had the switch silenced, it would ring once the condition cleared and the relay reset. But we're not going to get into that right now. I just want to, you know, we're still just getting into relays. So I just want to show that you can use the trouble bell, the trouble contacts for something. We're going to discuss how it's used for dialers or radios in the future as well. Um, but I just wanted to kind of throw that out there quickly. <clears throat> I wanted to get a little bit deeper into relays. In the first video I made, we discussed what happens in the school, using the school example again, what happens when... Uh, the alarm goes off and we set the fire doors closed and we already kind of talked about that and I also mentioned that the fans shut down so let's say you had a panel a pretty basic fire alarm panel and you only had one alarm relay so this is just kind of a mini like a maybe a snapshot of a panel you could see there's some power here this is just 24 volt power most panels have a few different power outputs they have non resettable power which means it always has a constant 24 volts of power um, and then they have resettable power, which means when you push the reset button on the panel, it'll lose power for about five seconds. And there, there's reasons for that. We're going to get into that in the future. But for right now, let's just say this is 24 volts non-resettable power. So even if, I, even if I hit the reset button on the panel, whatever I do, I'm going to have 24 volts right here. Well, let's say we had a couple different things we needed to happen. We needed to shut down fans and we needed to close fire doors. But we only have one alarm relay on our panel. Right here's our alarm relay. So how are we going to do that? Well, they make external relays. Um, this is kind of my drawing of a product called an MR201, but it's, it's basically any kind of relay. And this basically has a coil right here. In the future, I know I keep saying this a lot, but in the future we'll get more into what a coil is, um, how it works. It's kind of tied into, to, uh, you know, I want to talk about transformers and in order to understand transformers, you need to understand coils. Um, but for right now, you basically need, when, when this, this is a relay that when it when it gets powered up, let's say it's a 24 volt relay, when it gets 24 volts on here, these all change states. Okay, so um, so we'll, what what can we do right now? We can't we can't run fan power through this relay to our fan, and then door holder power through this relay to our fan, because you're going to be crossing the power and it's going to cause um, a lot of things to blow. So one of the options is install this relay and we kind of make two relays out of one and I'll show you how. So to power this relay up we're going to run the negative right to the negative side of the coil of this relay. We'll run the positive 
through our alarm relay on our panel. So again, this is just this is this is just 24 volts power right here. I'm going through common, it comes out to normally closed. And right here. And once this thing gets power, we're assuming the panel's in a normal state right now. Once this thing gets power, this comes on, there's a little light showing you that the relay's on, and these things change states. So, and this is one of the things that can be confusing about relays, is people like to look at the labeling and just assume that, you know, you see common normally open, normally closed, and you think, okay, well, I always know what that means. I always meter a relay, because sometimes they're labeled in their activated state, and sometimes they're labeled in their standby state. So right now, that's not the right color. Right now, normally open is actually closed because this thing's powered up. And this is the way we want to run it. This is something, we talked before about how you always have to supervise circuits. Every circuit of a fire alarm panel, right? There's got to be an inline resistor to, to make sure nobody cuts a wire on, on, a, on an initiating circuit, on a NAC circuit. Well, how can we supervise door holder power? There's, the, you know, the door holder, the, the power supply here doesn't need to see a relay. It doesn't care about that. Well, this is, I'm wiring this up for what's called fail-safe. Fail-safe means if I were to cut a wire here, I'm going to lose power on this relay, and everything's going to go back to changing states. See, I could have wired this panel, I could have wired this relay up through normally open, and this relay would have stayed off. But then if I were to cut a wire or lose power or, or whatever, you never would have known it. Right now, if something happens, well, let, let me let me finish this. When, if something happens, then these relays are going to change states. And I'll, and I'll show you, I, you probably can already tell where I'm going with this, but... So let's draw our fan circuit. Let's say this is maybe a hundred, this, this fan power over here is maybe 120 volts. So I don't have positive and negative, I have hot and neutral. Oops. So I'm gonna, just like we did with everything else, I'm gonna go from neutral right to my fan, and this is my lame attempt at drawing a fan. And I'll take my hot through the relay. And even though it says normally open, it's this this is closed right now, as we can see, because the relay's powered up, right? This this light is on. This thing has power. All right. So then we come out of common and go to my fan. So the fan needs a hot and a neutral to start spinning. It's got its neutral, and if we follow this through here, it's got its hot. So that's that's spinning right now. That's good. Now we take our door holder power supply, and we'll take. Or negative because this is maybe a 24 volt door holder. Go negative to negative, positive to common, and even though it says normally open, we know it's closed right now because that relay is activated. So I know there's kind of a lot of wires, you know, there's a lot of lines going across the screen right now, but it's all pretty simple if you look at it one at a time. So again, I just want to go over the idea of fail-safe again. Right now, this, this alarm circuit is complete, coming off the panel. We took our 24 volts, going through, common and normally closed, so that's complete here. There's no opens here. And so we have 24 volts right here turning this on. If I were to cut one of these wires, all these relays would change states, your fans would shut down, and your doors would close. Similarly, if the panel goes into alarm, then this thing, then, then this relay is going to you know, change states. It's going to open up. You're going to lose power on your relay which means you're going to open up both of your fan circuits and your door holder circuit here. And the fans are going to shut down, your doors are all going to close. So that was, that was, that's how we can, you know, and you could, you could see that you could make, they have relays that have four individual outputs. So, you know, if you had a lot more functions that you needed to happen, you could do that. Sometimes you have multiple door holder power supplies, so they have to be on different relays and you could just make as many, you know, chains of relays as you want, just using this right here, a relay like this. Um, I think that's probably where we'll stop this video, and we'll pick it back up in the next one. See you in the next video.